Welcome back to the Make Time for Success podcast. This is episode 62. Are you worried about what is in store for you if you're approaching perimenopause or if you're in the middle of it? Today's guest, Clarissa Christensen, is a menopause health coach, a neuroscientist, and mindfulness practitioner who suffered with severe anxiety during her own perimenopause and who found her way through it to become a leader of women who are going through the transition of midlife. She helps women live well through menopause by guiding them to be more connected to their bodies, to advocate for their health, and to see menopause as an opportunity in the next stage of life. Clarissa is the host of the Thriving Through Menopause podcast and author of the book, The Mindful Menopause. She drops so many different pieces of sage wisdom in this episode. I can't wait for you to hear it. Let's go listen to it now. Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Lee, and I'm a psychologist and a procrastination coach. I've helped thousands of people move past procrastination and overwhelm so they could begin working to their potential. In this podcast, you're going to learn powerful strategies for getting your mind, body, and energy to work together so that you can focus on what's really important and accomplish the goals you want to achieve. When you start living within your full power, you're going to see how being productive can be easy and how you can create success on demand. Welcome to the Make Time for Success podcast. Hello again, my dear listeners. It's Dr. Christine Lee, and today I am welcoming Clarissa Christensen to the show. She and I met several months ago when I was on her lovely podcast, and I am so grateful that she's agreed to be on today to talk to us about everything related to menopause. So welcome to the show, Clarissa. Thank you so much, Christine, to invite me to this show to talk about my passion, which is menopause. Yes. Do me a favor and start us off with how you got to be the menopause expert and a little bit about your backstory. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. I was a neuroscientist for 30 years. I worked in corporate life. And I went through perimenopause. And like I think a lot of women, the corporate life and perimenopause didn't hang together that well. And I suffered from a lot of menopausal anxiety, which is not unusual, to a point that it wasn't working for me. And I was brain foggy and other elements of my health and well-being weren't as good as they could be. And so I jumped off that corporate train And first I trained actually to be a mindfulness practitioner, but I had women coming to me in midlife over and over again. And I kept thinking there is a link to what they're experiencing and what I experienced. And the link was, of course, menopause. (laughs) So I retrained to become also a holistic menopause health coach. Uh, And so I kind of combined that with my mindfulness. And that's what I do now every day, along with my podcast, helping other women be able to thrive through menopause. That sounds like a wonderful train that you were able to stay on and make work for yourself. Can you please let us know what the name of your podcast is at this point in the game? It is. It's called Thriving Through Menopause. Okay, wonderful. All right. Now, may I ask you about that anxiety that you experienced? What were the symptoms that you went through? What did you think was happening? And maybe on a scale of one to 10, how distressed were you about that? Well, I think that the way it manifested was that things that I had been able to do really well, like show up in meetings, be very confident, speak in front of big audiences and VPs and my business, just crumbled. And suddenly there I was talking over people, very, you know, that very nervous chatter that had, you know, like, God, they're not going to hear me. They're not going to hear me. I was also experiencing mild panic attacks. And oh, well, and I had a couple of more serious ones where I felt like I was out of body, quite frankly, and have 
to this day, no idea what I've even said in those meetings. And (laughs) you're nodding and smiling like it's quite common. But it was distressing because suddenly the person that I had been, this confident, punctual, organized woman, just crumbled. And no one ever explained to me that this could be part of perimenopause. So I was searching for answers, thinking somehow that it was something wrong with me that people didn't like me or that I didn't fit in a corporate culture. And so I was left unsure of how to move forward. And it was actually very distressing because it plays then into your inability to sleep. And, of course, that in itself creates a whole myriad of of problems too. Thank you for explaining that. That sounds very distressing. When you left corporate, was that – feeling like you're leaving because you no longer fit in? Or did you leave because you felt like there are better beaches for me to be on now that I can explore different elements of my life? Do you know, I think I was just done with it. And I think that was their reality. I mean, I had, in honesty, a bit of a get out because I was in a financial position and my son had moved to Europe and I was just I can't do this anymore. I'm putting one foot in front of the other and going 10 steps back. That's how it felt. And I resigned. And then there was a moment when they were having a little bit of a go at me. And I'd never been other than this calm collected. And I slammed something on the table. If you know me, I'm not a person that loses their cool very often. And I banged these things on the table. I went, I've had enough of this beat, beat, place, I'm done. And I just left. <laughs> Which, and I think I had reached, you know, just a point where I knew that it wasn't good for me to be there anymore. And, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that I was going to do something different. Okay, interesting. And may I ask, how old were you when all of this was happening? I was mid 50s. I was about 55. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. All right. Now let's shift into what you feel was going on from a physical, biological standpoint that was contributing to your symptoms then. I think there were probably the worst had been the sleep because I just didn't sleep properly. And I had been a person that could have slept on a flat board. I could have laid down on a floor and gone to sleep. All through my 20s, my 30s, I I was the worst mother because I could never get up in the night for my son. (laughs) But I was a good sleeper and suddenly all of that evaporated and I was falling asleep really well, but waking up wide awake at one in the morning and then struggling to get back to sleep, falling to sleep at four and you know, then sleeping for two hours. And in that intervening period, I'd read every email, checked everything, social media, maybe less of that. It was work, work, work. And that didn't help me with respect of uh, my anxiety and the flow on effects from not sleeping. You put on weight, you, you feel just fatigued. And so that contributed, of course, to more feelings of anxiety. It became a vicious circle. I see that indeed. So can you explain what is the positive framing of all of that, that our bodies would change midlife in the mid-50s and the sleep gets disrupted and the brain gets foggier and perhaps there's more anxiety? What is the positive mindset, more mindful way of seeing those changes. Well, indeed. And I think the more mindful way is to see that you're making a transition to the next stage of your life. And I think that's what we often forget because it's very easy for us to be wired up in the negative. But if we actually see that this is a life transition, it doesn't last forever. It does end. And we almost always emerge in our mid 50s and beyond as much more confident stronger women who go off and go on to build amazing businesses launch podcasts write books you know all those things are there and we can do that even more because our children are growing up and we're suddenly in a completely new phase of life and i think if we can see 
perimenopause, this transitional phase, as that, even though it's messy in the middle, we are able to better navigate it. Okay, I like that a lot. What helped you to make that transition for yourself? What worked for you? What worked for me? I think one was definitely exercise. <laughs> and I, do, I say that because, of course, exercise helps us to manage stress. Exercise makes us feel, we get endorphins. I mean, there's a good boost of these positive hormones when we exercise. And suddenly there we are going, wow, I feel quite good. I feel positive about myself. You feel good about a body that's changing. I mean, we're never going to look like we are 20. We're never going to be the weight we were at 30. But exercising brings you into a more positive relationship with your body during a time of great change. So it it was very important for me to exercise. And the other was to get space to manage my stress. So I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to embed a mindfulness practice, and I joined a beautiful beachside meditation group. And I think those things, particularly the beachside meditation, really saved me during this time. That looking forward to that Saturday morning when we I could sit for an hour by the beach with a group of like-minded people and be quiet. No one was demanding anything of me. It was a, a fantastic experience. Okay, lovely. Now, you also mentioned that there's this stabilizing after the disruption or the transition period. And I have worked with lots of people who feel stuck or afraid of making the next move, making the next move to kind of opening up their vision of what they could do. What advice would you give our listeners if they happen to be in that space where they know there's more left for them in midlife, but they've been worried? They've been a little less than fully self-confident. Good question, Christine. I think first, sometimes we need to slow down to give ourselves some reflective space. And that's one of our, I think, our challenges in this time too, because we're so busy. We have so much going on. But if we can remove ourselves and sit back and have a bit of a chance to think, well, who am I now? What do I want from my life? What is it that brings me joy? What am I interested in? And a question I would ask my clients is, what did you put on the back burner? What were you passionate about when you were much younger that, you know, hasn't manifested, but you might like to explore that or the essence of that and see how you bring that forward into your life. And I think also visualization is very powerful. Seeing ourselves how we'd like to be gives us a great opportunity to then put those building blocks in place. Having a a plan, a plan for different aspects of our life is really important. So it sounds like the list of suggestions, including exercise, space for mindfulness, slowing down, reviewing what you're really wanting from your life, that those all can fit under the umbrella of prioritizing you in a very specific and focused way. What if we're still feeling afraid? Kind of what are the supercharged kind of (laughs) techniques (laughs) that you might have? If you're feeling somebody is really sitting on their big vision and you want to give them a nudge forward, what are maybe the secret tips that you have (laughs) to help women really say, you know, this is really your time. There's, There's no more time to waste. Yeah, and that's a little bit about unpicking why they're so stuck for me is really what is it that's holding you back? And is it just your own thoughts and therefore questioning whether those are even real? And there is that huge inner conversation that we have, I think particularly as women, uh, that we don't believe that we can. So I think investigating whether it is driven by you in which case I think there are so many 
good techniques to unpicking that inner criticism that you, Christine, as a psychologist, are so well aware of. But I also think we ask ourselves whether it's we're constrained by other people's expectations of us. And are they real? I mean, is that real? And if so, how we can broach a conversation maybe with whoever we think it is that's holding us back. You probably find that sometimes that isn't actually the case. We think our husband wants us to be like that or our children do. And I think we have to go there. We have to be not afraid to have those conversations and and free ourselves up. So I think it's a very individual thing because we need to know where it comes from in order to then address it. These are beautiful suggestions, and I back everything that Clarissa is saying. It all sounds wonderfully sane and effective. Could you tell us some of your top takeaways from being a menopause expert, really being a voice in a field where people are oftentimes afraid or reluctant to talk about things openly? What gifts has this expertise given you? I think my first expertise is that we have to have awareness of what menopause is all about. That if we have no understanding of what we can expect, then there is natural fear and we're much more open to the gossip and the, you know, the sort of negativity that flows in every society. So Building basic awareness, go to reputable websites. If you're in the US, you know, it's a quite staid website, but the North American Menopause Society has factual correct information. So the first thing that we need to do is know what to expect. Secondly, is get armed to ask the right questions for your clinician. Because if we turn up at a, an appointment, say, well, I don't think I feel very well and I don't know, you'll get dismissed because they're very busy. They've got 10 minutes or whatever it is they have to see you and they may not give you the attention you need, but you need to come sort of armed. And in the UK, they have the NICE guidelines. There are similar ones like that. And you say, I'm experiencing X, Y, Z symptoms. I would like to have X, Y, Z. Do am I a candidate for hormone therapy or whatever? And have a really direct conversation with your clinician. Most of the time met by that, you will find somebody, or maybe your clinician, if not, change them. <laughs> but, but definitely you are empowered. You're not, you're not then navigated by a system when you're not a victim you're asking questions. So I'm I'm big on those things along with tracking what's happening to you so you can have an informed conversation. My other tip would be is you have great ability to self-regulate. We have the ability to manage what we eat, how we move, and our ability to rest and sleep and take some action towards managing our stress. Those things are within our own control, with or without some assistance uh, to get the right nutrition, etc., into us. But those will give you a strong base, will build you the ability to be resilient through <laughs> perimenopause. And you need strength on many levels to do this journey. But then you are also going to support any medication that your clinician may or may not give you because you've got a strong, healthy base. And we need to remember that we're at more risk after menopause of potentially cardiovascular disease, dementia, um, osteoporosis. And so a strong, healthy foundation is going to give you so much support for a long, healthy, happy life because that is possible for all of us. And many of us are going to live 30, 40 years after menopause is over. So we want to be putting ourselves in the best position. This is all beautiful. This is beautiful. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and your compassion for, I think, all women who will need to go through this period be very fortunate to be able to go through this period to transition into what sounds like a more centered and empowered and fruitful period. 
it sounds much more like a positive experience when I listen to you than <laughs> when I think about the traditional views of women in menopause, that there is stress and there is fatigue and there is this confusion, but there's so much more that we women are about. And I love that you're able to put all of this power into some simple guiding principles for all women who are heading into midlife, perimenopause, and beyond. Oh, thank you, Christine. <laughs> it's not now, that scary. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making it less so. Could you tell us about the book that you've written? Because we haven't spoken about that yet. No. So I wrote a book actually three years ago now called The Mindful Menopause. And that's very much looking at how mindfulness can support women to go through this journey. In particular, I think it pays a lot of attention to our somatic experiences, the experiences that we have in our bodies and how bringing, as I said, that awareness, we can actually feel it, embody it, work and listen to our own bodies. And I do a lot of work also with our thoughts. You know, our thoughts are only thoughts. They're not real, even the ones that tell us that they are. And we have a lot of those in perimenopause that race around. I mean, if you're brain foggy, maybe you're worried that you have dementia, but that usually isn't true. So we have the power of our thoughts. And the book also has a lot on positivity and compassion, because I think that there is a huge need to be kind to ourselves and to have a sense of equanimity, of evenness and calmness and connectedness at this time. When so much is changing, if we can tap into that kind little voice of calm that lives inside each of us, we have so much more ability to actually go through this time of life. Even if it's hard, we can still do it quite well. And if it's not so hard, and it is for some women, it's kind of a little up and down, we can thrive. Yes. <laughs> Clarissa sees me smiling in the video <laughs> because I think life can feel really quite difficult. And I agree very much with Clarissa that there is always a space of calm inside of us. We need to nurture that, protect that, remind ourselves that we can bring ourselves back to that point with intention and with love for ourselves and with the knowledge that it's not really going to serve us to spin out of control on a frequent basis, but that it's worth our time and effort to kind of nurture that practice of, oh, this really is just a fleeting thought. This is a fleeting situation. This will pass and this moment will pass too. Could you share with us maybe a somatic technique or a quick something that our listeners can do if they're feeling like their anxiety is shooting up all of a sudden or yeah. they're feeling confused? Do you have anything for us? I like stop, S-T-O-P. You know, you can literally become still and take a breath and then observe yourself check yourself from your you can start on your head or your toes I don't mind either way but just do a quick checking in through your body just scan through your body what does it feel like are there little points of tension are there parts of our body that actually feel nice and soft and then take a pause and move through your day. And literally, we can take a moment with a stop technique, stopping, checking in, taking a pause and a breath and moving in. It's not difficult. We don't need to do anything more than that. And a minute or so on that on a regular basis through our day. The checking in is very good because we often find then, oh, I'm a little tense here in my shoulder. Or maybe I'm holding some tension in maybe our hands. Oh, I could just let that go for a moment. And just by drawing attention to a part of our body, we almost automatically find that it softens if we give it a second or two. I love it. You make me think about how toxic every day can feel if 
you're feeling like you have to run through everything without stopping, that there's no room or there's no excuse to stop and that we have to be productive all the time. I'm a big fan of productivity. Everybody knows that, but I'm also a big fan of staying sane. So let's remind ourselves of Clarissa's stop technique. If you're feeling pressured, if you're feeling like you're behind, know that you can stop at any moment and it's okay. You control the situation. You control how your body transitions through things. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I used to say that to people who ran from meeting to meeting, Kristen, and they said, well, there's one meeting and another meeting. I said, but isn't there a moment where you walk from one meeting to the next or, or move room? Oh, yeah. Well, then you have one minute to stop and gather yourself and then you can go to your next meeting. And it's the same in our households where we're busy the minute we get in the door. And we do have those moments wherever they are through the day. All right. I think that is a beautiful place to rest and express our gratitude to Clarissa for being here today and sharing with us this mood, this entire mood about the latter half of a woman's life. Thank you so much for bringing your wisdom here today, Clarissa. You're lovely. Oh, thank you, Christine, for having me. All right. Please leave us with how our listeners can stay in touch with you and maybe sign up for your materials. Absolutely. The best place is to go to my website, which is my name, clarissachristiansen.com. And there you can see my programs, you get a link to my podcast and my free resources. That is lovely. I will make sure to link that up in the show notes for our lovely listeners. And I want to thank you again. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, dear listeners, we're going to see you next week for another new episode. Please take a minute and subscribe to the show and send in a rating and a review for the show if you happen to like what you hear. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make Time for Success podcast. If you enjoyed what you've heard, you can subscribe to make sure you get notified of upcoming episodes. You can also visit our website, maketimeforsuccesspodcast.com for past episodes, show notes, and all the resources we mentioned on the show. Feel free to connect with me over on Instagram too. You can find me there under the name Procrastination Coach. Send me a DM and let me know what your thoughts are about the episodes you've been listening to. And let me know any topics that you might like me to talk about on the show. I'd love to hear all about how you're making time for success. Talk to you soon.